saying the ca camera is off center and he's made adjust. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> stop laughing. Let's try for perfection. Okay, anyways, guys, welcome back to Jay Ziyagi, and this is where I share my audio file journey, experience, and story, as you guys know. Today, I'm gonna share with you something very interesting. It's time for some serious talk. We're gonna talk about Deluxeman M900U power amplifier. Now this is a discontinued product. It's something I bought with my own money in the used market. And at the time of its release, it was retailing for 19,900 USD. So basically 20,000 USD. Uh, and I always wanted this amplifier. In fact, I've asked many reviewers for a reference amplifier and this is what they recommended me. Uh, virtually every reviewer I've asked they said the same thing. I said, price no object, what would you get? And they said, they said Luxman M900U. And so I looked into it and luck will have it. I have luck with these things. One was available and I picked it up. And I've had some time with it uh, for the past few months now. And I've been really enjoying this amplifier. And I know it's no, not always that people can afford these kind of amplifiers. And I know I'm gonna get a bunch of comments saying it's too expensive, yada yada yada. And that's what I thought in the beginning as well. I'm not gonna lie to you. When I bought it, I was thinking to myself, I'm being stupid, you know, it's an it's amplifier. And yes, I've worked with high-end amplifiers in the past when I used to work in a retail store. But for myself, it's another story, right? But when I bought this and actually opened up the box, I wish I had a video of that, right? Like I was smiling because the build quality alone was just a statement piece. It was just so beautiful you ever open something up and you just know it's high end like just just the smell of it Sm smell Sm smell metal that's what i'm talking about right <laughs> but anyways uh it was very well built like craftsmanship wise just mm. and i started to do some digging and then obviously some reading on the website of what this luxman does and there's a bunch of stuff but at the end of the day you can do your own reading i'm not gonna go over every detail but again at, at this kind of price point it's a statement piece it's their top of the line amplifier at the time so they're gonna go for that you know every detail matter approach so every little detail is very very well documented on the website they're using odnf which is an abbreviation for only distortion negative feedback and uh, the power rating is also very very impressive because it's 150 watts into 8 ohms again not that impressive it's a class ab design and it's 300 watts into 4 ohms but now this is what is impressive it's 1200 watts down at 1 ohm and you may be asking what the why, why would that be important what why well let me explain i'm glad you asked so when it comes to speakers, speakers have an impedance curve. Just like a frequency curve, it has an impedance curve. So we've seen speakers like the Tecton, Pendragon, 2 Ohm, where it's a difficult to drive speaker because of its impedances. And a lot of speakers that you see in the market that has a 4 Ohm rating or an 8 Ohm rating, if you go look in the back of your speaker right now, it should say like 8 Ohm or 4 Ohm, or if you look up your speakers, if it doesn't have in the back, some, some don't, uh, then that's not the impedance curve that is like the nominal impedance like the average just for the sake of simplicity so when you look at an impedance curve it goes and up and down up and down up and down and sometimes it drops to even low as two ohms on certain speakers depending on the frequency so that's when you need an amplifier like this that can give all that power can give uh you know can handle that kind of imp impedance and what you, what you get at the end of the day is much easier dynamic swing. And what I mean by that is there's dynamic contrast. And when you have a gear that can drive your speakers to its fullest potential like that, like you don't have to worry about, you know, oh, is it gonna go down to two ohms or is it gonna go down to four ohms or whatever? You don't have to worry about any of that because this amplifier can handle any, speak, any speaker out there. You know what I'm saying? Like it can handle without you having to worry about it. And so I like that flexibility. I can literally throw any speaker that comes my way in the studio and just plug it to the Luxman and it will drive it. Will it sound best? Will it, will it synergistically sound good? It's another story, but it will drive it. 
So that is the beauty of the speaker. Of course, it's using high, you know, high quality components, but as the size and the weight will suggest, it's just a beast powerhouse. And power is not always about you know, 150 watts at 8 ohms or 200 watts at 8 ohms. You can find class D amplifiers in the used market or even Chinese SMS amplifiers with like 300 watts at 8 ohms. So you can get more power at wattage rating. But it doesn't translate, at least from my experience, directly to how well it will drive and handle your speakers. So that's like the beauty of high-end designs, right? This kind of takes the worry or equation off the, off the table. Not always, but in this case, yes. So how is the sound quality? Does the sound quality live up to that $20,000 mark? My answer is no, no. Do you think so? You've heard it. It's tough to say, definitely. It's tough to say, right? I mean, for someone who has $20,000 or like, you know, it's just nothing to them, yeah, sure. But for me, it was a big decision, right? For me, it was like, holy shit, it's like buying a house, right? Like buying a car. It's just like, oh, okay, and like, do I do this? It was more of an impulse thing, not gonna lie. And overall, sound quality wise, the first thing I noticed is not that I'm unhappy with it. I just haven't, no, I just don't think $20,000 is something I would have spent on it. Remember, I bought it used. So, secondhand, you know, I bought it for about 15,000 Canadian. That translates to what, like 10 grand US? So that's about it, right? And for that kind of price range, I think it's very acceptable, I think for, for me, right? I can't speak for everyone. And the sound quality is definitely better than anything that I have in the studio. Meaning here, I have the Thalo, I have the Denifrip stuff, I have Denifrip's Apollo, the gigantic monster. But even compared to that, the build quality doesn't match up whatsoever. Like the Apollo is great, greatly built, but I even said it in that review, the Denifers Apollo is greatly built, but it doesn't match anywhere close to the Luxman. Like the chassis, the finish itself, the meters, the, the overall look and you know in-person presence of the unit is something else. So it's not just about sound when, sound when it comes to high-end products, right? We know this, there's obviously diminishing return and there is definitely there, you know, this is, this is a product that has a diminishing return. But when I hooked it up, the first thing that I, I noticed was the depth and sound stage. And it's not even the width. The width is pretty, pretty great. Like the width is pretty great, but it's not even width. Cause I've heard great budget amplifiers with good wide sound stage, but the depth was just unbeatable. Like there was so much layering happening between me and the speakers and beyond the speakers that I was like, holy crap. I listened to all my favorite tracks for the, you know, again and again and again, um, the entire night. And then it was like 3 a.m. and I was like, oh, look at the time. And I started like what, like 11? So uh, it's a very engaging amplifier and I've tried it with multiple speakers from budget to, you know, all the way up to like $10,000, $15,000 speakers that I have here. And it sounds good, but I feel like this is a sound signature that is more balanced with a slight bit of emphasis on the high frequency refinement because the high frequency is very, very refined. But if you're someone that doesn't like bright sound whatsoever, this is not it because this amplifier goes for finesse, goes for grip in the bottom end. It goes for detail in the mid range and the high frequency. It has airiness to it, it has spaciousness to it. It has something that I would say a no complaint sound for most people because it does everything well. And it kind of reminded me and took me back to the time I had the uh, Dan D'Agostino's at the high-end retail store. Well, I didn't buy it, it's not mine, but I tried it and it felt like mine because I was listening to it every day, right? And the thing with the Dan, De Dan D'Agostino Momentum uh, monoblocks was that it was nothing to complain about. It was just so good, like it was so balanced. There was nothing to complain about the bass, the mid-range, the high frequency, it was all good. The, the high, you know, the width, the everything was good. There was nothing to really complain about or nitpick. And that's kind of like this Luxman. It's like really hard to nitpick unless you don't like bright sound or refinement in the high frequency. Like you, you, you like the Dynaudio Evo 10 type of guy. If you haven't watched that video, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch that video and then you'll get it and come back. Uh, then, then you won't like this. 
But for most people, yeah, this is this is a beautiful piece. I mean, it sparkles, sweetness on the top end, and whatever speaker I throw at it, it just seems like it's bringing out more of the speaker, you know? It's not like coloring it or doing stuff like that. You know, I, I know some people are a fan of that, like Macintosh, again, a high-end product, colors literally every every speaker, right? Colors it with that Macintosh sound. But this Luxman kind of gets out of the way, right? It's beautiful, but it just brings out the best of each speaker. And whatever I described in my videos of each speaker in the past, like the Picard S400 Mark II or the Kalish Model 5 and so on, it does the things that I talked about, but better. Like just miles, miles better. So do I think it's worth $20,000? No, but do I think it's better than anything I've owned or had in the studio? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I mean, uh, at least in the last two years. Before that, I had a very high-end system and had many, many high-end components. And yeah, I would say this, this kind of takes like the top two or three amplifiers I've ever tried. And the other two was tube amplifiers. So out of solid state amplifiers, I think this is the best one I've owned to date. Now it is very heavy, it's 120 pounds, so I can't even move it by myself. I have to have this guy always over here to you know move the Luxman. Every time he comes over, I'm like, we have to move the Luxman. And he looks at me like, again? Why? Why do you do this to yourself? I asked the same question. So at the end of the day, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it uh, infinitely because of the weight and because of the fact that I spent a lot of money on it when I really shouldn't have. So I don't really know if I'm going to keep it. But if I had the option to, if I had the money to, yeah, this is an amplifier that I would keep. It's a keeper amplifier in my books. And you can take, you can take my word for it. You know, like I've had a lot of high-end stuff. They can take my word for it. You can trust me. He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, point aside, I just want to quickly share my experience with this uh, since I bought it. Oh yeah, I just want to talk about the binding post for a minute. I know that's like kind of late, late notice, but the binding post looks cheap. And I was cheesed, man. Like when I first bought this, like I, I was expecting some metal, some high quality WBT type, like something. It, has, it, look, it looked cheap. And I was kind of upset but once I started using it, different story. Like the usability is just phenomenal. Like spades, no problem, very tight. And because it has that kind of uh, handle, I should say, that other binding post doesn't, you have much more grip. You don't even need a tool to, you know, tighten it. You know, it makes me cringe every time, you know, a high-end manufacturer tells you, and this has happened many times, many times, even today it happens, you know, to get a wrench or a tool, to go to your binding post on a high-end product and then twist it? Mm, no, that makes me cringe. But this, don't need a tool. You can tighten it as tight as, tight as you are, like tight, as tight as you can with your strength and you're good. So yeah, I, I think that is very well thought out, especially at this price point it should, but we can't say that about every high-end product. At least I can't. So yeah, I, I really like the product. I think they did a very good job on their flagship and I believe they have a new one now called the M10X or something like that, but that's 50 watts in class A, which is different from this amplifier. And I think this amplifier, at least for me, sounds phenomenal. I believe it goes like 12 watts in class A and then it switches to you know class B. But overall, I don't think most people will deviate away from that class A zone. And it just sounds so sweet and phenomenal, man. I absolutely loved it. And if you are in the, if you are, again, if you are that rich, <laughs> too blunt? If you are in the market. Okay, fine. If you're in the market, then yes, this is a good option. I think uh, coming from a person who used to be in the high-end high -end business, right? I think, I think it's one of the top three amplifiers that I've ever heard myself. So yeah, uh, solid state, solid state. Anyways, that's pretty much it. I hope to uh, answer more of your questions in the description below and please be, keep it civil you know it's not it's not fun to talk about how you can't afford it that's that's not interesting to anyone so don't even bother <laughs> is that too blunt True. well that's pretty much it and i'll see you guys on the next one hope you guys take care and make sure to like this video if it was helpful entertaining for you and make sure to subscribe and uh, until next time peace